the toughest extreme enduro rally in the world, the Red Bull Romaniacs in Sibiu, Romania, an international event of superlatives. Five days in Dracula land by motorcycle through the beautiful Carpathians in real untouched wilderness. One of the last great adventures. The madness begins with the prologue, which brings the action very close into the city and to the spectators. Hard, dirty, painful, physically and mentally strenuous. Romaniacs, to me, is one of the biggest races. And like you say, you expect the unexpected. Oh. It's supposed to be the toughest race in the world and it's living up to its name. A challenge even for the best off-road riders in the world. Well, Alfie Cox raced for the first time in 2004, obviously the first edition of the Red Bull Romaniacs, and he said to me, hey, you've got to go do this race. So we packed up and came over, and wow, what an unbelievable experience it was. And he was right. Romania's landscape and the Carpathians are unique. The people, hospitable and enthusiastic. In the first year, Martin invited us to come and race a different style race than an enduro classic race. Honestly, I didn't know what to expect. He said we are going to have difficult uphills compared to other races. Former snowboard world champion and motocross rider Martin Frenatomitz recognized early on that the enduro possibilities in the Carpathians are world class. Yeah, the idea started with a visit to my wife's grandparents here in Romania. I fell in love with the Carpathian Mountains. Motorcycling here is tremendous. And after knowing all these mountains, I knew I could organize the perfect race here. Ten years later and we're here, and Martin's organizing his first international rally. We have the best riders at the start, and I'm competing too. The legendary first prologue. 35 enduro riders fighting their way through the old town of Sibiu, starting directly in front of the Continental Hotel, which today, beautifully renovated, still exists. Full speed through the alleys, up the steps of the city wall, across historic squares, and through empty houses. The organization of the first rally was, of course, tremendously complicated. I even had to postpone it, but I didn't give up. The first rally was a real success and was declared a legend. The Red Bull Romaniacs has become one of the most popular motorcycle events ever. Starters from 53 nations travel halfway around the world to compete in CBU. I have no idea what it takes to put this race on, but from what we have to do with signing on and everything, you know, it takes years, you know, it must have taken him so long to, to build up such a good race. The prologue for which the old city boulevard is closed is an invention of the Romaniacs. It has established itself worldwide as a standard and the ever new ideas of prologue designer Andy Fazekas are often copied. The prologue is a follow-up to 2004, the trademark of Crazy Bike and the Romaniacs, based on the Russian principle of hard to very hard. One hundred tons of stone, wood and tires turn the boulevard into an insanely difficult hard enduro prologue course. The English powerhouse Billy Bolt dropped the hammer and rides the prologue of his life. He wins with a one-lap lead on South African Wade Young and Bavarian Manuel Lettenbickler. Pretty much got the lead off the line. Second last year and one better this year, so yeah, pretty stoked. The first off-road race day leg, a tough 219 kilometers in rainy, sketchy conditions. The ground is soaking wet and slippery, which makes it harder than its usual difficult level. Graham Jarvis, the best of the world's best, arrives destroyed after six and a half hours. Definitely feeling my age today. Kind of run out of energy about halfway, but still in there, so I've got to keep going. These are actually good circumstances for Jarvis, who finishes fourth, but he is cold and he has trouble keeping up. Despite the difficult conditions, the young guns strike. Wade Young finishes first and takes the lead. They just kept it flowing. Manual is real good on the technical stuff. It's all good day, it was fun, but pretty long. 
Manuel Lettenbickler sets the fastest time and wins the day, making him second overall. Two-time Romaniacs winner Johnny Walker lurking in third place. Second race day, finally the weather's a bit better. Running first, hopefully nobody's catching me, that's the plan. But Young is there on his tail fast and it's now a head-to-head -head race. Manuel takes a dive and loses time and strength. Meanwhile, the most feared king of the Carpathians, Graham Jarvis, is struggling and has to follow. Yeah, I'm just uh, pretty tired. I don't mind admitting it. Normally like the hard bits, but I'm pressed praying for the easy bits at the minute, so just want to get through the day. Wade Young now leads just ahead of Manuel Lettenbickler. 12 minutes back, Johnny Walker still has good chances to win. The dirt conditions are really bad. The Romaniacs puts one on top again. Rumors say 2018 is the hardest. And I'll be so glad when it's over. Yeah, if you don't push the limit, you don't move forward. And when you see the athletic level nowadays, it speaks for us that we were absolutely right, raising the bar every year. It was hard even back in 2004 at the first Red Bull Romaniacs. Even the most complete rider of that time, Cyril Dupré, had to realize that this rally demanded all of your skills. Cyril Dupré was um, obviously a legend in the, the big rallies like Dakar and all the other uh, roadbook navigation um, races. He was in a lucky spot at the time. If he'd been around at this time, I don't think he'd have stood a chance, to be honest. The sport was really new for all of us, you know, everybody was used to the normal classic enduro style because nobody had uh, experienced this level of, of, of difficulty before. If you want to get on the top of that podium, you had to be faster than the Frenchman. Only his compatriot Michel Gao managed that in 2006. Dupré dominates the Romaniacs until 2007 and won the rally three times. I didn't have time to train as I wanted to for this year because I have a complete rally raid program with Turkey, Tunisia and Morocco with a lot of sand. So I'm focused on the rally raid and I came here really for pleasure. In the previous years I enjoyed a lot of these mountains, the Carpathians. I had to come back this year. He was fast, he could navigate, plus he was good in the trial sections. Accordingly, he was miles ahead of the others. We came over here, we didn't know what to expect. And of course, going into these forests and there were these insane downhills and things like that that we'd never ridden before. And I remember sliding at the top, hanging onto my bar like this so I didn't lose my bike. Got down to the bottom and there was a cable section where we got you know, attached our bikes and we literally got um, on a pulley system across the ravine. This mountain is crazy, I tell you. Where does this happen in the world, you know? And that was really a big introduction into the series of hard enduro races that came after that. The concept behind the event is to give all the best riders in the world the opportunity to show what they are capable of and how high this level is. The 2005 level is not only said by Martin Freinademitz, the weather is also playing a major role. Well, we had heavy rain in 2005 and I remember waking up in Petrosani and I opened my hotel window and the window ripped out of my hand, broke the glass, torrential downpour, flooded roads, we got to the start. And Cyril Dupre didn't want to start and he got everybody together and he said, guys, it's too dangerous. And Martin was saying, no, we have to start, we have to start. And then a big rock fell off the side of the mountain and landed like right next to him. Bah! He's like, OK, yeah, maybe we ride the first section. Giving up is not an option for the Romaniacs organization. Try is a must. If you don't dare, you don't win. But there was uh, one guy slipped off the pathway. We all chained our arms. And even although it wasn't in the race and we were just riding, it was like extreme and we had to pull each other back up on the pathway again. It was really something that nobody had ever seen before and could never have imagined that it was going to be like this. And now you can see why at this rally you need friends. I've never ever had to push so hard in my life to get out of the mountains. It was a race that I'll never forget. As many others will also not forget, the legend of the toughest rally in the world, the Red Bull Romaniacs, was born, albeit initially with contradictions and complaints. There was a lot of swearing back in the day. This can't be right. 
the race gets too difficult, the emotions of the riders leap to the forefront. When I get back to the hotel, I'm gonna find a doctor for Martin because he's mad. I think I flipped over three times. Insane. That's not riding, that's sledding. He apologized for the rest. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. We never know with Martin. He is right, and if you think you've made it, he'll add to it. The birth of the Enduro house fight. That was really hard. Actually, it's better not to know what's really going on because there are tears. Yeah, the guys were angry, but in the end they realized that they were pushed past their limits. And when you made the finish line, you actually felt really good because you achieved something in the day to get through that hell. Once you finally reach your goal, you feel not only satisfied, you also deserve to take a look at the beautiful Carpathians, which wipes away all that pain. more and better trained riders come to compete. In 2008, a trials rider from England wants to give it a go and wins right away. A technically skilled rider with little knowledge of GPS, Graham Jarvis. Yeah, I followed Foster for quite, quite a ways. I think that helps, helped a lot. But on the, in the extreme sections, maybe I, I got through a bit better than him near the end of the day, so that's what made the difference. It does bother me a little bit because when I ride my speed and navigate exactly, I don't think they can follow me any longer because they often get lost. Just thought I'd give it a try. Uh, actually uh, just teamed up with a mate in a van. He brought my bike for me. Yeah, just as an amateur, really, and won the race. Uh, pretty cool. The 2009 edition goes to the Bavarian Andreas Lettenbickler and his big, fat BMW. Who knew you could win the Romaniacs with a heavy 450? Andreas Lettenbickler had a past as a trial rider. He'd been the German state champion in trials, and he was very fast, too. Letty was riding really fast. You know, I remember trying to keep with him, and he had, uh, you know, fantastic speed, and, and then that was his year. Some sections have strangely unconventional names. Meanwhile, the riders know the wilder the name, the crazier the section. Each of these Romanian mountains has its own name. These are sometimes difficult for us to pronounce, so we started to name the sections as it just happened to us at the moment. There was the go-home hill, where one of us did quit and went home, and then it was the long walk, for example, where we had to push the bike. Martin himself needed two hours for that long, steep part. Andreas Lettenbickler did it in half an hour. Today, his son Manuel Lettenbickler rides this uphill in only seven minutes. It's the toughest. For the pros, the pros really cry here. Normally, pros can do most tracks with, with ease but not here. The first time at the long walk is pure despair. After several attempts, one believes that this is not manageable and then calls for help. Hello, man. I'm serious, man. I can't get up here. I have. I took that past out. Back in the day, I told him, yes, you can make it. I made it in two hours, and you are a better rider than me, so you will make it in one hour or less. The leader, Cyril Depré, also wants to save himself the agony, but does not count on Andreas Lettenbickler's fighting spirit. Up until the long walk, Depré was still ahead of me. He thought, if we all ride around, then we all get a time penalty, and he wins. That was Cyril Depré's style back then. I said, no, not my style. I tried. A good decision. I did it with my strength and the power of my BMW. I climbed up there and had, of course, no penalty time. And who won? Me, Letty. The long walk almost got me. You have to give him some respect. He's one of the most ambitious and competitive people that I know. That's why he's come this far in his career. 
Paul Bolton would have already been on the podium in 2009 if he had ridden up the long walk at the time, but let himself be tempted by Cyril Desprez to pinch and go around. Poor Paul. After that, he was the perennial fourth. I was always the fourth place guy. Uh, these days, if you get a fourth place, it's like, it's, it's really good, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be as upset as I was back in the day. When it came to riding fast and navigating, Chris Birch was definitely at the forefront. New Zealander Chris Birch needed four attempts to reach his dream goal of a victory at the Romaniacs. The sport aspect of the story, he owes this one to South African rider Rian van Nikir. I started having some uh, problems with the bike, it kept um, shutting off all the power. I saw Chris and I thought, sure, that's not possible, you know, and yesterday I had such a good lead from third place. Um, we had a look at his bike and uh, we, I made the decision to, to help him. And Rian offered to, to help me by swapping parts of the engine round, parts of the electrical system until the fault went away. And yeah, he wouldn't take no for an answer. And, that yeah, was amazing. I was just waiting for Rion to come in. I should be here for the finish line for him, because I wouldn't be here without him. Wow, Rion, a true sportsman. In 2011, Graham Jarvis rides into a new era. Having figured out GPS, he manages the unbelievable triple. Till now, he is the man to beat if you want to reach the Romaniac's crown. Graham Jarvis is the first rider who was better by a stretch than anyone else in terms of technicality. And he was able to hold his own for so many years. And if the bike held, then he was the winner. He's the oldest of all of us. Uh, he's got a lot of experience. He did the, the races uh, more times than anybody else. He rides steady. Obviously, he's not slow at all. I think the young guns at the moment are too evenly matched. So they're all pushing and they're all going to find each other's weaknesses soon or rather than later. But no, nobody's beating Jarvis for his crown in the near future. In 2013, he completes the 10th anniversary of Red Bull Romaniacs by winning the fourth time in a row with an unbelievable 45 minute lead. It meant a lot to me to get the, the four wins, but I still had. Uh... Just, you kind of just focus on what's ahead. You don't get too big-headed. Keep your feet on the ground and, and just keep working hard and try and get more wins. After the long reign of Cyril Depré, the long years of Graham Jarvis came until a Johnny Walker knocked on the door. 2004, when it started, I'd have just been BMXing around the streets at home, not really thinking anything about enduro. His dad actually uh, got me up there to give him some coaching lessons, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he owes his, all his skills to me, really. Romaniacs, to me, is one of the biggest races. You know, to, to win this one is a massive achievement. The young guns are making life difficult for the old men. Johnny Walker, who has emulated a lot from Jarvis, manages to defeat the old champion in 2014 and takes first. At only 23 years old, for the time being, the youngest winner. On the far sections, he just had the edge on me, and in the technical stuff, he was right there. So. Yeah, the young guns have, the young guns have very good technique, train hard, and are hungry. Johnny wasn't the only one who wanted more. The 18-year-old South African Wade Young shows a fighting spirit that is willing to take risks at incredible speed. This brings him third place and the historical entry, youngest gun on the podium. I mean, the young guys, they've got the same level, really, basically. You know, there's, there's hardly anything between us technique wise and uh, you know fitness maybe you know that's where you know inevitable getting older it's going to become more of a challenge in 2015 Johnny Walker repeats the win but with a dramatic final well he takes a refreshing mud bath at the finish obstacle Graham Jarvis safely crosses the finish line clocks ticking for Jarvis in the end seconds to side. King Jarvis is beaten again. 
This year, the Leti era comes to an end and starts anew at the same time with his son Manuel. He goes on the attack, but like many others, he found out quickly that the Romaniacs demands experience. He's motivated. Of course he wants to have a good result. But in the end, the Romaniacs spit him out, like she did with so many beginners before him. In 2016, the old master just will not give up. On the first two technically difficult race days, he already blew everyone away. The young guns are coming with a pace. They're really aggressive. They attack all the climbs. But uh, the older guys have definitely got uh, the upper hand in terms of experience. And they've normally uh, a bit more, call it uh, foxy, uh, with their thinking throughout the race. On leg two, Jarvis takes 16 minutes off trail in enduro champion Alfredo Gomez. The Spaniard rides his best Romaniacs ever into second place. Wade Young is, Wade Young is obviously faster on the speed sections, therefore the race is getting faster. The last day of the race is fast and Wade Young is on point and full throttle. He overtakes Gomez and Jarvis, securing the stage victory and third place again. And so I really pushed out the start. I just treated it as a one-day sprint race. And I just had a good flow and knew that it was my last day. I didn't have to monitor my pace. It was going until I blow. As long as Jarvis is still here, it seems like first place is reserved. He's won his favorite event six times. The spots behind him are, however, more competitive. The level in the rider's field is so close that each of the top 15 could make it onto the podium. In just his second Red Bull Romaniacs, Mario Roman from Spain takes an amazing second place. Doing so many kilometers, you have pain everywhere in every muscle, so I think it's the toughest for me. The rider with the eternally thankless fourth place is long overdue. Finally, Paul does it. Ten years in the making, it's uh, been a while, but you know, we've got here in the end. A Romaniac story can also be written when everything goes wrong, as with Xavier Galindo. Poor old Xavier Galindo, he went all the way down the bottom of the hill. He couldn't get back up, there was absolutely no way. And he was wedged between the bottom of the mountain and the lake. What do you do? You can't go back up there. And I think he took his clothes, he took his, most of his clothes off and he started to swim. And I remember this one bit that was the most important bit about the story. He said he got halfway across and realized he was in Romania. Nobody knew where he was, and he started to panic because he couldn't see the shore getting any closer. Row a boat across, collect the bike, back across. Great story. And when he started again, he made a navigation mistake and missed the turnoff and came down on an almost impossible ridge. Today, we say he scouted very nicely for us. Now, eight years later, the Galindo Ridge is an uphill section. From the past, back to 2018. But the Galindo section is only one part of the so-called Loop of Madness, which also contains mean things like Babysitter and The Long Walk. Three hard passages that draw all the energy from the body, especially in bad weather. Having these conditions, everyone bets their money on Graham Jarvis, but he has to quit. I'm gonna have to stop. What? I don't feel too good. To actually pull out the race will have broke his heart. He's known for never, ever quitting, and. It'll have been one of the hardest decisions. I'm sure he was going through some emotions in his helmet when he was deciding not to, not to actually carry on. I only know the last downhill he did before he gave up the race was a really difficult one, and so I can imagine, if he wasn't well, that he really had enough after that downhill. Which one of the young guns will go for it? Wade? Manuel? Johnny has already shown twice that he can do it. Wade Young leads the stage. The German, Manuel Lettenbichler, only seconds behind him. Johnny Walker is still within striking distance at 17 minutes. At the finish line, the three exhausted musketeers are done with the Enduro world for the day. The winner will probably be the one who can regenerate best with a good night's sleep and overcome that inner doubt on the last race day. I got a four minute lead going into the last day. It's not much and I know it's not over, so I just arrived to the finish in one piece with no mistakes. 
After the service point, Wade, Manuel, and Johnny are only seconds apart. All three take full risk and go full throttle. Who has the most power reserves is the question. Manuel Lettenbickler shows his skill in the technical sections. When it gets fast, Wade Young scores. On the last uphill, he just pulls through. After five extremely tough days, he has that little bit more power in his tank that he needs, and the 22-year-old becomes the youngest winner of all time. So much adrenaline going from the finish, so I'm not feeling tired at all at the moment, but I work hard, and it's, it's finally good to see a payoff. It's a box tick, you know, it's such a big race. The best of the best are here. There's, there's none better than these guys that are here this weekend, so I'm so happy to, to get the win. The 15th epic edition of Red Bull Romaniacs has been another success, with 60% of the participants completing the race. Now the organization team is going to reconsider and analyze how this event can be done even better. The track managers are already out in the mountains scouting for future race sections to again attract the world's best riders and to offer the amateurs an unforgettable challenge through the Romanian wilderness.